So you might want to turn that down 
just make sure that you use your headphones to start off with at least, if not keep your headphones in at all times, just to make sure that your audio levels are good. I had a pretty good uh, view of my peaking monitors, which is um, little lights on the top of it will flash if the microphones are picking up too much sound. And there was absolutely no wind where I was sitting, so I knew I was pretty good. I'm using a wind uh, shield over the microphones here. Some people call it a dead cat. Um, it uh, basically just completely eliminates wind noise in uh, situations like this. And essentially, I sat down in a good spot um, and set the tripod up. If you have a look in the last shot, you can see that I'm actually not completely flat. I'm on an uh, uneven surface here. So the camera is actually shooting slightly upwards to maintain the, uh, the horizon. And also one of the legs has slightly been extended. There's nothing wrong with a bit of a bodge job. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm about to buy a new tripod once I get some uh, some money from the channel. Um, I mean, you know, whatever I can afford, basically. So uh, that tripod is really, really bad for the kit that I've got on top of it. But anyway, it's fine. So essentially, I framed the shot how I wanted it. I managed to get this breakwater in, and the, the shot just kind of ends at this point here. Uh, I managed to get the horizon nice and straight and the sunset in a good position as you can see on here. We're about 8 minutes in at this point and I decided to take a photo so I could demonstrate to you guys how this was done. Now, as I said before, audio equipment, video equipment, it doesn't really matter. I started the channel just using my iPhone camera and that was fine to start off with. But you need to have a stereo microphone so you can talk from the right to the left right to the left of people to make sure that they are getting a good level of um, audio quality. The Zoom H4n uh, is relatively cheap, especially on eBay. Um, you can get one for uh, sort of, from what I remember, around about sort of £150. I think they paid for a brand new one, but I know you can get them even cheaper than that. That's going to be your main investment, is making sure that you have a decent camera, or if you can't get a decent camera, make sure that you are, you've are you got as much light as you possibly can shining on the subject, not shining at the camera. Uh, filming a sunset is a very different situation. Um, I'm using a high dynamic range that the camera is able to achieve. Um, by which basically means that it films kind of like two frames at the same time, a low exposure and a high exposure, and it combines them to give you uh, less shadow on sort of darker subjects when you have a light shining in the camera. But like all other situations, you want to be making sure that you have your light focusing on the person or on the subject. And in ASMR videos, most of the time the subject is you. So have lights shining on you, but not at the camera, behind the camera. And that will make it a lot easier for you to get good quality out of bad cameras. Um, it's like just a principal thing. Just throw as much light as you can possibly get hold of. Get a, a, a bedside lamp and put it directly behind the camera. Get, you know, a, like a little spotlight or something and just put it behind the camera, whatever. Just, just throw light at yourself as much as you can until you can afford to get some better equipment. So for this we've got our shot set up as you can see, uh, we've set that up as, as far and as, as well as we want it to be done. We've got a place that we can sit down uh, and get the sort of, this is actually my dog's blanket um, in the car, but I didn't have anything else with me so I just needed something to sit on because I didn't want to get a cold bum, basically. <laughs> but once we've got the, the shot that we're happy with, we can hit record and we can just set that going now. There are two ways of recording your audio, as I said before. You can record it live, like I am now. I'm recording and I am talking to you guys at the same time. Or the alternative option is that you can record your microphone later. Now, in the pur for the purposes of this video, uh, it's all done live, but the, the video that I'm actually editing for you on camera today, it was actually done, the voice was done afterwards because um, standing around and whispering 
stereo binaural microphone that I'll then use the H5 to point directly at the thing I want to want to sort of like focus on, like an unboxing video. I'll focus on something like I've got something and I'm doing all this. You know, it sounds a lot better coming from here than it does going from here because you can hardly hear it when it's not pointing directly. So I have separate microphones for my voice and stuff like that. So the thing to bear in mind is whilst you have one microphone, you have to choose which one you're going to do to start off with. Once you know, you then need to make sure that you mark your videos. And by mark, I mean in movies and things, you know, you see someone go three, two, one, mark, and they'll like clap something at the same time. Usually they have like time ticker uh, things that clack and they give a timestamp, and that's a way of syncing up things nice and quickly. We're not that technologically advanced here in on the ASR cast. But anyway, so the f the content that I'm going to be uh, editing with is uh, on Premiere Pro. Now, I have already set up an edit for this um, to show you kind of like what the finished product would look like, but we're going to do it from scratch as well. So you guys get a good chance to see what it's supposed to be like. Um, but essentially what I did is I set up the full thing in the in the project as you can see down here and just played it once and the reason that I did that is because I wanted to make sure that I had everything set up so that I could do my voiceover in time with the edited content that I've put here which is each chunk of the file because my camera puts things into little 4 gig chunks basically and then knowing exactly when the video ends so you can see yeah, that's basically all that is, it's just the video going forward and forward and the clouds going by and eventually going into night time and fading out. So the video looks good, we've got that all fine, but for the purposes of this video I will start completely from scratch, so I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to call it Recorded ASMR because this, it's the recorded video now. I'm going to be setting up scratch discs for this now. If you're not doing really high level um, video editing then you probably don't have the kind of hard drives that I do. I've set up uh, what's called a RAID array where it's a bunch of hard drives working together to make sure I can get some nice uh, quick performance. You'll probably be just using the same hard drive that you're using now so these will all say like uh, same as project and then the path will be like wherever your, wherever your, your project paths are. Now my project path is obviously on the uh, the other hard drive that I've set up specifically for this task of recording and dealing with large amounts of information, um, but that's fine. So I can take that on, and it's it doesn't matter for 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 the, your purposes for what you're trying to do. It really doesn't make a difference. So um, until you notice it to be a problem, don't worry about it. Once you notice that you're being limited by your hard drives then you might want to think about getting some sort of external hard drive, but anyway, so this has all been set up for us. We're going to be using the CUDA GPU acceleration because I have an NVIDIA graphics card in my computer. This will actually set automatically for you, so you don't actually need to press this. If you can do CUDA, the CUDA option will be selected. Uh, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff here, and you can leave all these same as project. So once you've done that, you hit OK, and you have a timeline here with no sequences in. Now, what Premiere Pro does for you is it synchronizes the audio uh, frequency, which is like the 44,100 hertz. You guys might have seen that in uh, listed in sort of videos and, and audio files and stuff like that. Um, and then once your project has that information, you you then have to make sure that all your subsequent files are at the same frequency. Otherwise, your your audio when you're doing like hour-long videos, your audio will end up being sort of slightly shorter or slightly longer, and you'll go out of sync. So the most important thing that you can do to start off with is go to where you keep your your footage. I keep it all in in the raw section with all the GH3 video files now. These are all ones that I've all used. I'm terrible at deleting things because I have so much hard drive space. Um, so there's a lot of content here. You can see some videos from Christmas and stuff, and I've got all the trapdoor content and stuff in here, but the only thing that we're really interested in is the videos, the files that we've just made. So it's the new ones that are just down here. So we take the first one and we drag and drop it in there and that basically creates a, a sort of like a stamp. So it takes that information and it goes, right, okay, so I know that we have uh, audio of 44,100 
SE standard for 60 frames per second, which is the standard for YouTube, 60 frames per second. More about that later. And all I'm going to do is essentially take all these files and put them in one by one, because the video is the most important thing. Now, as you start working with your content later on, what you'll probably do is have templates where you have your intros and outros already set up and you just move those around. And then once you've kind of moved those into the position that you want to keep them, uh, you'll just kind of keep that and you'll just save yourself a bit of time by going into a template. But we're not doing that because we're going to be starting from scratch for you guys here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is going to get the audio from my H5 synchronized up to the video content here. Now I'm going to actually just import these directly because I need that one and I also need to have the voiceover that I did earlier on today which is this one here. So if I go into my project just down here you guys can see that I have these two files here ready to go. Now I'm just going to expand the audio sections here, one, two, and three, so I can see the pinks, the peaks, that is, uh, so I can actually get this roughly correct before I need to even bother like sort of going in and messing with it. Now I know that it's going to be round about here, because you guys can actually see that it's roughly around there, and then what we basically do is we go in in more detail. Start playing the footage. Three, three, two, two, two one, one. Mark, mark. So you can see that's completely out, but I am marking it myself. So it was mark, mark like that, so you can see where the peaks are on these files. And essentially, you go right into the video. And then once you're there, you just have to move that over until you're happy with the position that it's in. Now, my mouse is. Uh, just disappearing ever so slightly because of the fact that I'm recording, so I just need to quickly minimize this and try to get that back. There we go. Got it back again. That's a bit weird that it does that. Anyway, doesn't matter. For the purposes of this video, we've got that sorted out. So now, if you listen, we have both of these tracks unmuted, and that should now be the same. Three, two, one, mark. Three, two, one, mark. Perfect. So that's, that's exactly what we want. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to mute the track, which is not very good, the lower quality one, and that's the one that's actually from my camera. So if I press mute there, then that will now Three, be... Three, two, one, mark. Three, two, one, mark. That's now just the sound from my uh, Zoom H5 now. So that's perfect. That's what we want. And now we want to basically get to a point where we're happy that the video is ready to start. So as you can see, there's a lot of sort of faffing around, getting headphones plugged in, checking the sound levels, all that kind of stuff to start off with. And there's a little loud bit coming up. There we go. So essentially what we want to do is we want to go through and find a good place to start the video. So I'm just bringing this back. sniff there so if we take it from that point there that's fine okay so we now know that we have got around about 41 minutes worth of content for well, 42 minutes and 12 seconds or something like that so that's now sorted the next thing that you want to do is take your different sort of sounds and bits and pieces that you use uh, now for this I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to go into my uh, Premiere Pro file that I know contains uh, the correct files. But you can go through and you, you know where your files are so you don't need to do this, you can just you can do it yourself. Uh, all that I'm doing is just, because it's all basically here as you guys can see, so I can just grab these real quick. Um, but you know, all I'm doing is just getting this from here, where I could go through to ASMR cast into intros, into all my different files and stuff, but there's no point. So I'm going to create my fade in and fade out that I have on my channel. Uh, and essentially what that is, is five seconds, it's a roundabout, I don't, I don't actually know exactly because I never have to create these myself. It's a fade in. Uh, of these two, so 
essentially. I'll just show you real quick what this looks like. I can bump up the quality a little bit as well so you guys get an idea. There we go. So you see it goes from there, fades out that, and then fades out and goes off. Now, like that. So we're going to cross dissolve in, cross dissolve out, and then cross dissolve out again. There we go. So now that comes in, and then it fades through to the slightly darker one, and then it fades through to not being there anymore, if that makes sense. So hopefully I'm, this is my kind of very convoluted, very quick way of showing you guys how I work, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that this isn't too weird and complicated for you. But essentially, I've gone into my effects, I've taken my cross dissolve video transition, I've applied it across the, these files because this is this is a BSD that I've made and this is a BSD that I've made, they're two separate files. And essentially I'm just cross threading between the two and because they are the same but one's missing some colour, it looks like they're sort of fading out. It's just like a cheat, basically, to make it look really good because Photoshop works really well with Premiere and that's one of the reasons why I like working with it. So the other thing that we need, any regular viewers will know, we need to have our music as well. Which is not that file. Let's see if we can find it. It's down here somewhere. White Lotus, that's it. It's a track by um, Incompetech. So if anyone's interested, then there you go. Now you know. So as you guys can hear, the track starts, and fades in, and then starts to fade out again at this point here. We're going to put an exponential fade in at the end, which we're going to give 10 seconds to fade out. So probably like 15 seconds would be good. That'll do. It's just a very, very basic demonstration here. So it fades in and then fades back out again. It's usually longer than that, isn't it? It's usually about 20. With a fade in, fade out. Let's, let's try that. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's nice and slow. It comes in. And then heads back out again. Now I know that I've got one more audio track that I want to put in here, so I'm actually going to put this down the bottom here. I'm just going to get it and put it down there. It's going to make a new audio track for me, so I'm going to put that down there. Because I know that I've got to also have one more track in, but let's get everything set up properly first. Now, one thing that I know that I have to do real quick is... Uh, set this up so that we have the video set as it was. I was just getting ahead of myself there. Go back into RAW, back into H5, and take this new file, the ASMR one. In fact, we've already done that, haven't we? Yep, it's already here, so we can take out that one, put this one in like that. Now, this file is going to be different, so we'll mute these, and it will give you a chance to give a quick listen. Play. So rather than mark, I said play, and as you guys can hear there, there's a little, very gentle click with a mouse play, which is just there. So essentially what we'll do is we put that there, we take it back, and then the 3, 2, 1 mark lines up with the, the why well, I say 3, 2, 1 play, because I played it from here, so I know that that lines up with the other project file that I've already made. And for the purposes of this video, you can just imagine that this is the project that I worked on before and now we're at that point. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I can do. Let us actually now go and work in the actual... Uh, well, no, actually, no, tell you, we can't do that because I need to render out that project. Never mind, ignore that. So you're just imagining that we're in that project and the 3, 2, 1 play, I've now synchronized that up. So if we unmute this, we should now have everything synchronized up, which is fantastic. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take these, we're going to make them all slightly shorter and we're going to try to make it so that the hello guys comes in right here hello guys Bye. 
whispers that I work with, I like to expand the stereo image slightly. And essentially what that does is it takes out some of the volume of the mids uh, and enhances the just the sounds that are purely in the left channel and the sounds that are purely in the right channel. So it gives you kind of a, a nice interesting level of, of sound and just makes it a bit more kind of stereo-ish, allows for some higher level triggers. I don't always do it, but in this video, for example, we're not going to mess with the basic C track because that is kind of, I think it's okay as it is, it's already quite low level. One thing that it can do is give you a little bit more white noise in the background, so it's not something that you want to do every day. Um, but because I know that the whispering track that we're using is not actually that, that's got that much white noise on it, we're going to improve the stereo image of that to enhance the level of ASMR that you guys are getting out of the video. So hopefully that comes across uh, quite nicely. It does take a little while to render and uh, replace. It's basically transferring this audio file for me automatically into Adobe Audition, which is our audio management program that I use to record external tracks and uh, basically just to work with audio whenever I'm not using Bandicam or another program that records my audio directly. So for example when I'm making videos in GTA, which is not recorded using Bandicam, it's recorded using a PS4 capture card, I use a Audition to record my microphone for that and then synchronize it up again later in post. As I said before, it all comes down to recording at the same time and marking your stuff or making it all go into one file and, and having it synchronize up. It's never it's never easy unfortunately. Now what I'm gonna do is the auditions come up on my second screen but you guys can't see that. It's only recording one screen for you. So once it's actually finished loading the file, which it's still doing right now, I will drag that over and start to show you guys the stereo expansion process is really really straightforward and in fact takes about 10 to 15 seconds but unfortunately we have to go through all of this to get there um, because Audition is basically going through that entire file and setting it all up and making a copy of it for us. So anyway, here is the file, left channel, right channel, you guys can see. You don't need to know too much about this program. Um, you can do some simple things like add reverb, like I, that's what I do when I'm working in some of the sort of uh, other concepts that I do. So you guys can hear now if I wait for the hello guys. Here we go. Hello guys. Is that a reverb to it? And welcome back. But we don't want that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to stereo imagery and I go to stereo expander and I'm just going to have to quickly do another right click to get my mouse back. Uh, it still hasn't come back so just bear with me. Here we go. Uh, I have to minimize this, minimize this. Try and get it to come back properly. There we go. It's really strange that that happens but anyway. Uh, we're going to go with the narrow, the wide field which is 200% stereo expansion, so it's doubling the stereo expansion. ASMR cars. So if I turn that off today, today is on the right there, but now if I turn it on, that should be even further out. We're going to sit back. It's very hard to explain, but it does do a really good job. Uh, I've tested it myself, so anyway, we've done that. That's all been set up, so we'll save those changes. And what that does is it automatically puts that corrected file into uh, here for us. You can see that now we're not using the file ASMR anymore. We're using ASMR Audio Extracted, which is the one that it just did a render and replace on for us. So if we now have a little listen and see how it sounds so far, we're going to add a cross dissolve on our video footage there so that doesn't come in too too loudly. There we go. And also a couple of uh, little 
changes. I'll have audio, a couple of uh, little exponential fades so it doesn't come in too harshly as well. Make the one on the C a little bit longer. There we go. So it comes in quite smoothly. And there's me talking for a little bit. Come back. Do another A, S, M, R. Perfect. Okay, so we're pretty happy with how that's now happened. And if we head back over here, I'll see you for another video. We're at the end of the video now. We're going to go back into uh, ASMR GH3. And we're going to grab the outro parts of the video. Which is a 30 second outro plate. Outro logo regular. Which is just here. Uh, but for all intensive purposes, it doesn't matter how long you actually do it for. This is just the way that I make my videos. So we've got to wait for that file to import because it can take a little bit of time sometimes, unfortunately. And then once that's done, the last thing to do is to make the outro crawl that goes across the bottom of the screen, uh, which is actually pretty straightforward to do. Um, it's just you go into title and default crawl. And you can make it in there. Um, it's nice and straightforward. But it looks like that's not going to actually work. The importing seems to be uh, having a bit of a problem right now. So rather than hang around for a million years to try to find out why that's not working, I'm going to end the video here. I hope that this hasn't been too rushed, too kind of all over the shop. Um, I've had a lot of fun doing it actually, uh, it's always quite fun to do tutorials like this about how I work, um, my workflow and bits and pieces like that, so if you guys have enjoyed this please do let me know, um, I'm sorry there weren't any triggers apart from kind of talking about stuff that I know about, uh, so yeah apart from that, thank you very much for watching as always and I look forward to seeing you all